So this is a homily for Sunday the 29th of March, the fifth Sunday of Lent. Traditionists like myself still like to call it Passion Sunday, uh, even though if like modern liturgists have shifted this to say Passion Sunday is actually Palm Sunday, the start of Holy Week, which is logical, but certainly um, the way I was brought up um, we would call this Passion Sunday because it was the day that the priest would preach about the Passion. And actually liturgically, we see a notice as we move to Passion Tired Liturgy. And with our hymnody as well, the hymns are about the Passion. So there's a small justification at St Michael's we can still call this Passion Sunday. Um, but for many, many other churches, they will just stick to Lent 5. You'll find the readings for Lent 5, Passion Sunday, on our website. Um, but I'm, to just to, uh, if you've not seen that, to remind you of what they are for Year A, Lent 5. It's our four readings, more than most churches. We like to keep all the readings. They're all read or sung. So it's Ezekiel 37, 1 to 14, Psalm 130, which would be our sung responsorial psalm at a sung Eucharist, Epistle Romans 8, 6 to 11, and the Gospel, it's a long one, John 11, if you're going to do it all, 1 to 45, although we would probably just go for 17 to 45. So I thought briefly I would just comment on the first of our readings and the last of our readings. So look at the Old Testament from Ezekiel and the Gospel um, from John. They are two classic passages and they are wonderful passages. Essentially, in a nutshell, it's about death to new life. Um, and in our current context, it's good actually uh, particularly to focus on that new life, uh, that there's something at the end of this. So Ezekiel 37, it's the passage of the dry bones in the valley. And one of the things I love about this passage as we get in Ezekiel 37 too, I do like this, he led me all around them and there were very many lying in the valley and they were very dry. I love that. They were very dry. In other words, think of an arid place where there is no life. These are bones, not flesh and blood, just bones, which were very dry. Um, so that is, is making a point. Um, and then, as you'll know, with this story, as the chapter uh, goes on to say with this prophecy from Ezekiel um, that those bones, if you like, come to life. And as we read in verse 10, I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and they stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Some of you might have been present at our Darsen Synod in air earlier this year when we could still move around. And when the Primus took the chrism of oil, there are three oils, but we had a, we had a chrismas as our Synod Eucharist, and he took the top off and breathed into it, which is wonderful. Um, so this sense of breath, life, and as it says, um, they stood on their feet and there were many of them. So you get this transition from death to life, and as the passage goes on, this is a metaphor that these bones are the whole house of Israel, as it says. And this is talking about uh, Judaism, um, Yahweh's people, the, the covenant with Yahweh, which particularly Jewish people have, um, and this prophecy of you're dead and wanting to come back to life. In other words, turning back to God. So that's Ezekiel. And although we're very much in the New Testament, obviously, with John 11, the fourth gospel, it's the story of Lazarus. And what a wonderful story this is. 
it's the same sort of idea with those dry bones where we're reading about this account of Lazarus in John, he says unequivocally he was dead for four days. So if the bones are very dry, Lazarus is very dead. No two ways about it, unequivocal. He's been in this tomb, in this cave for four days. So when our Lord asked to have the stone removed, rolled away, think of the resurrection, that stone rolled away, the concern was the stench of this dead body, once again emphasising, if you like, how dead Lazarus actually is. He'd be buried four days ago. Stones removed and out comes Lazarus. Strips of cloth he asked to be uh, removed, our Lord's command, and there he is very much alive. Two stories about going from death to life. So here we are in what we keep using this term now, unprecedented times, and it's very hard not to think about death. We know, as we watch the news each night, as the death toll keeps going up in the UK and around the world, it's hard not to think about that. And indeed, some people have spoken to me their concerns about their own mortality and so on and so forth. Of course, we're thinking like that. It would be, frankly, a fairly um, un unusual, I suspect, if we didn't have some thoughts um, like that. But the beauty of these two stories, and this is really what Passion Sunday is about. Passion Sunday is about preaching the passion, which of course leads to the resurrection. So on Palm Sunday, traditionally, we don't have a sermon because we have a passion play, we have a drama which acts out the gospel Hence, no need for a sermon or homily. So today, we're talking about it, two weeks before the resurrection of our Lord. And these two stories make that point, and very pertinent, as I say, for the time we are now living in. We may be rather consumed by thoughts of death, suffering and so on at the moment, but it leads to new life. And even if tragedy is, uh, comes upon us in our families, uh, um, there is this promise, this hope, that there is something greater to come. Most of us, they say 98% of us, if you get the virus, uh, will survive and come through this. It's a very high percentage. Maybe it's an opportunity for us to still think about that new life, not in the afterlife, but in the here and the now. And it makes us ask questions like, how can we care for God's creation in a more uh, constructive way, um, without doing damage to it, with our carbon footprints, so on and so forth? How can we live in a better society? How can we make our communities stronger? This is all about new life. And it connects with what's around us. You just um, go through the spring equinox, here we are on the north bank of the Clyde. Um, we see these high tides, that's what we have at this time of the year. Wonderful gushing water for us, maybe a sense of cleansing we associate with that. And we look in our gardens, the daffodils and so on. All about new life, coming from death in our gardens through the winter period to new life as we see new growth. So these are very powerful themes. And whether we look at scripture, whether we look at nature, about what might happen in our own lives, these things are all connected. There's a sense of interconnectedness. So I'd like to conclude with a collet for Passion Sunday, Lent 5. And may we make this our prayer for this week. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us with the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.